Hey, you guys. I am. Hey. I don't want to hold no water. Uh, I'm okay. How are you? I've been working all day. I've been up since five. Working, working, working. How y'all doing? Hi. I know I normally, this isn't my normal time. I'm actually going live with LGBT moms. Yay. Oh, I, oh my God. You guys bought a badge. I didn't even know the badge thing was on. Oh, oh my God. I bought their first badge. Don't forget to tell them thank you. Oh my God. Like I never ever used that thing before. I, um, do you guys need help with um no we don't grand rising thank you hi 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 i didn't even i didn't even know <laughs> okay new something new hi if you guys are just meeting me for the very first time my name is tracy i'm the ceo and the founder of the mbda so welcome i'm getting ready to go live with lgbtq moms and uh, so thank you so much beginning life doula thank you so much that's so sweet I didn't even know I accidentally I accidentally hit that button. Uh, so I appreciate you so much. Um, I support my BIPOC family. Yay. I appreciate you. So we are waiting for her to join us. But in the meantime, um, thank you guys so much for being here. The big mom. Oh, I heard the big mama Mia. That's cute. Um, I normally go on live Mondays. And I want to wish you guys like a happy holiday season. And I want to really acknowledge those who are in a period of grieving right now. I know this is a, um, this is, oh, there she is. Hey, Mia, just send a request to join. This is a period where, you know, a lot of families, um, experience, have experienced loss. It's a hard season. We've come off or are still going through the pandemic and all of that that means so i don't want to be re remiss as far as acknowledging that so but i know this isn't my normal time but hey so we are getting ready to go live um, God, I have a new day that's so cute thank you for acknowledging it. yes of course of course girl if oh my god my head is cut off that's where my head is so like large let me sit back how are you i'm good how are you i know this is forever we you guys have no idea how long we have been trying to get together and do this live these schedules girl is <laughs> it's, it's like it is. oh my god and then finally i was like Please take my link because I need it to be in my calendar. So I'm glad we can make this happen. So, hi. Hey, hi, everybody in the comments. I'm super <laughs> here. I had joined from my the Big Mama Mia page, and I was like, wait, let me let me go <laughs> switch Instagram. <laughs> oh, so I'm grateful. I always wanted to be a doula. When will the in person the in person classes are resuming? Um, next year so our calendar is being updated if you guys are looking to take an in-person training with the mbda make sure you circle back around um pay attention to our calendar because it will be updated um come next month so we are working on that to input our new 2022 calendar and you will be able to um take those in-person trainings. I know there's one coming up in Florida pretty soon. What's up, Raphael? I know there's one coming up in Florida pretty soon, but yes. So please pay attention to uh, the calendar because it's we, we, we back. We back. So you will definitely have the opportunity to take, um, hold on, to take a training with us in person or online. Okay. Yeah. So we are so grateful that you guys could join us. Mia, I'm so grateful that we finally could lock schedules in. Me too. Me too. Girl, so talk to me about, about, I think this page is really beautiful. And I've told you that just like, in, you know, just in us 
you know, chatting back and forth. But why did you think that your page was so necessary? So it didn't even start as a page. It started as a Facebook group. Um, and it started, it was birthed. I always tell people out of selfishness, I needed community. I am a Black queer mom and parent. Um, and so it's what I needed. I needed to be able to build community. I needed to be able to ask questions and make friends and just be I look fine. Um, I needed, like, I had, for one, an amazing doula. And she walked me through this, the whole becoming a parent, pregnancy, uh, trying to conceive processes. And my family would not be what it is without, um, without her. And so I'm like, other people needed to be connected to resources, too. And I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. if I needed it, somebody else needed it. I couldn't find it. At least I couldn't find it without, like, you know, there are a million and one mom groups. There are a million and one lesbian groups. There are a million and one, you know, Black spaces. But there was nothing that was especially at the intersection of where I sit. Um, and so that's who I'm in service of today, of our Black queer parents. Wow, thank you so much. So like, do you have any questions for me and like us or like how we can like better merge and support? Because um, I know like way back yonder, I think, I, mean, I don't even know where this came from. People were like, not people, but folks was like, the NBDA don't even support LGBTQIA. And I was like, these motherfuckers, these motherfuckers don't even know who's sitting at the helm. Like for, that's kind of weird. This is real Tracy talking, y'all. But, and I just kind of laughed and like rolled my eyes. And I was like, that's so not true. Because if you really understand who we are, you know that that is incorrect, especially since it's number one, that's not what I stand for, you know, as far as making sure when inclusive, when we talk about being inclusive. Um, and when I talk about BIPOC and birthing bodies, nobody is exempt from that. Like if you in this skin, like we all can fall victim to the the the, the racism that's embedded within Western medicine as it pertains to obstetrics thing and gynecology. Hey. So so what is it for you that you see us elevating more? You would want more black and brown doulas to know. What it is, and, it, and it's not, it's not, it's not, um, your association is not true, Tracy, of course. I know that, so like, I can't believe that y'all here because Girl. it's not true. It's very, very far from the truth. Um, <laughs> but what it is, is that in general, in society, people don't think, when they think of successful pregnancies, parenting, marriages, they don't think of Black queer folks. It's not, it's just not what, it's not what comes to mind when you think of like, okay, if I want to be that like, go getter mommy and parent, if I want to, you know, birth successfully, successfully, if I want to feel safe and that's, you're not thinking of this person. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think- or even getting pregnant, girl, let's talk about that. Like getting the, the, the way to conceive. Mm -hmm. Even. There's no like there's nowhere for black and why I, and why I started the group there's no there was nowhere for black queer people to turn when they'd say I want to start a family it ain't in most of our cases it's not gonna happen by happenstance um, we, we need we need it's, it's a journey for us and it doesn't always look like um, we have the, you know the the fertility side of it like uh, as black women and people, we experience fertility issues just like, you know, other groups, mm -hmm. and even at higher rates than other groups. Absolutely. But for, not always, our fertility journey doesn't, isn't necessarily rooted in struggle or rooted in um, not being able to conceive first. It's just where we have to start. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so for us, that's where doula step in for us immediately. Because what mm -hmm. the first thing that I say is that there there are fertility doulas. There are trying to conceive mm -hmm. people that will help you get this started. And for my community, they didn't even know that it existed. And then mm -hmm. what does that path look like as a trans person? What does that look like as a non-binary person? How do I walk through this and get affirming care? I'm a, a, a pansexual cisgender woman, and I couldn't even find uh, mm -hmm. affirming care that was like, okay with my gender identity okay wasn't making um assumptions about my sexual orientation or sexual preference none of those things so if i couldn't find it i know that the most marginalized of us were are having trouble finding it as well i love the language that you use and i know you the your language is is just second nature but for people who struggle in that area like why is inclusive language so important needed and necessary 
the last thing that you want as a care provider to do is to make someone feel like even in your space that they have to validate their humanity and misgendering someone and um, not not using inclusive language does that you know mm -hmm. when, if I'm sitting in if I'm sitting with you and we're talking about how I'm gonna start my family and you get my pronoun wrong or you say things like um, if I'm you know working on getting this baby up out of me you're like oh you just need to have sex I'm like if there's no if, there, if, if there's no uh, sperm on the opposite end, that doesn't work for me. Now I feel like, okay, now I got to take up space when I'm supposed to be feeling mm -hmm. joyful and feeling, you know, cared for and, and supported. Now I got to take, take up space in my brain and my heart to explain to you why that's not my situation. And that's mm -hmm. invalidating as, as a birthing person. That's invalidating as someone that's looking to build and nurture families. So how would doulas, like, put themselves out there as far as being like say I support or I am because I know when people join the MBDA if it's not already we are embedding like as part as like specialties or areas of expertise it's like they are also going to be required to you know click a box if they are if they identify or and support and have additional education around supporting um, BIPOC uh, queer families and what does that level of of additional training for them look like what we're requiring but for you or for parents um, that fall in that space that are seeking that level of support what are some key factors that I mean I know but what are some key factors <laughs> would you say um, that doulas can put on their website like this is the also the community that I support because they can they can you know, not look in love the same way that you do, but definitely still be a great ally. I always just say, like, like, what you, like you said that you're instilling in, on your pages and your sites, say the thing. Um, so if you support us, say it and make it loud and clear and proud and out there for us to see, because that's exactly what we're looking for. Like, when we head to Google, we're like, LGBTQ uh, doula. Like, that's like, that's what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. So you have to say the thing so that we know, like, have dedicated space for us so that we know that we're thought about and prioritized in that way and, mm -hmm. and I even think it's like step further like for us it's something important like is there ASL like I mean is there an ASL need is there you know a, you know a disabled body situation where that's a neater or even plus size body because that's a form of discrimination too with, within when it comes to the birthing space so yep. I think all of that anything that a doula who like this is my area or this is my niche I think that is so necessary for it to be like like you said out and proud and put it out there because the body of people who are birthing who are seeking that level of expertise or care or specialty need to know yep and it's like it's like in stuff as small as like your intake like paperwork whatever that looks like like if you're at, like mm -hmm. ask the questions like what are your pronouns ask the question like what does your family look like you know what, mm -hmm. what dynamic like are you a, a person with a uterus are you not like what you know asking those questions so people know that these are the things that we're thinking about when i know that is going to come into play when i'm giving you care right uh, if you guys have questions please feel free to put them in a question box because i don't want to miss them you know in the midst of the conversation um, let me see. Somebody did leave a comment. Let me see. What a great topic spreading in the hours discussion. Well, oh, thank you. Be more respectful. Ah, uh -uh, see, that's the purpose of it. So what is it like? Why did you feel it was so important for you and I to have this conversation? I thought it was one very important because one of the things that I always say is that we need as one, just as black moms and parents, but Girl, also looking child. Like, and I'm old parent too. My oldest is 28. And I'm like, how y'all do this? How y'all do this? I get still sound that folks are having babies. I was like, y'all. Like, we do. I'll say. I lost it. What was the original? <laughs> I lost it somewhere. Somewhere. Why did you feel it was necessary that you and I connect? Oh, yes. I felt that it was necessary for us to connect because, one, I just needed people to know, like, even on our end, um, that when they're looking for doulas, black doulas, queer doulas, they're out there. And like, we have a few in our group, but I want them to know that this goes beyond just the few that they can find in our community, no matter where that they are, that they can find affirming care and it can be through this platform. Um, Thank you. 
Thank you so much. You're welcome. So that's number one. And two, I think it's a matter of safety for us. Um, mm. Like as as that's what I was gonna say. There, told you I was gonna catch it. Um, <laughs> as as black. Thanks for the mom um, brain. That's that mom brain. That mom brain. <laughs> we just we can't. My, that's how my kids get over on me. Like, mom, you said this. I'd be like, no, I didn't. No, uh, uh. They be like, mom, you said that. I'd be like, nah, uh, and that they be getting over. Yes. <laughs> As, as, as black people as black women as black parents we need to feel safe especially when it comes to healthcare. reproduction is already dangerous you know what i'm saying so you're gonna need if you can I, i'm queen build the village that's why i built a community build the village and a part of that village is going to be your mm -hmm. medical care your health care providers your whole person care providers mm -hmm. and that's what we needed to be able to find and that's who i'm helping to always connect our community with yeah yeah i i think that you and it does take it takes a village and i also believe i think for us here on this side i believe we can no longer look for those that don't look like us to save us you know i don't like that mentality so <laughs> it's like we gotta get we gotta shift the way of thinking and really look to First of all, I love how you said you started out of selfishness because really what you what that says is not necessarily out of a selfish space or need. it's like you found a need and you filled it. You found a void and you filled it. And it's kind of really how I started with the MBDA. I was like, where are all the black doulas? I need a one consolidated spot as much as I can to 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 fill this void so it was like you found a need and you filled it and you keep compounding the needs of that what that village needs that look like them so you know it's part of creating the safe space yeah because there are certain things that you're gonna say and you can give me a look and I'll be like I understand what you mean mm -hmm. yeah because it's the person like my, my dude, that's the person that you're trusting that like, if I can't advocate for myself in this space, I know that you can advocate for my needs. And how can you as advocate for my needs if you don't understand them? So if you don't understand what what I walk through as a trans person, what I walk through as a queer person, what I walk through as a black person, I can't trust you to advocate for me because you mm -hmm. you don't get it. You're not you're not mm -hmm. walking this walk with me, and you didn't take the extra step to get to know what birthing as a trans person looks like, what birthing as a non-binary person looks like, what, what it looks like to be a non-birthing parent. In, one, in, in a coupled relationship where you're walking through this um, journey to conceive or journey through parenting together, looks like. Could you talk about like just the the stories that you've heard about the journey to conception and what that, what just sharing some of the stories that have come across your desk, so to speak, about, you know, your peers? Yeah, so there's, there's stories on, you know, opposite sides of the spectrum. There are those who are, you know, we're, we, we're going to reproduce, we're going to do it at home, we're going to, you know, home inseminate, we're going to use a known donor, we're going to, you know, uh, we're, we found a black donor, they're known, we got our, our contracts in order, we're going to do this at home, we did one and done, first try, first month, it was great. And mm -hmm. now we have a family and we didn't experience any issues, we gave birth at home, it was all natural, I'm wonderful, yay. Um, but then there are the people that have to try multiple rounds and it's taking, you know, a little bit longer than they hope for. And it's weighing on their person. It's weighing on their spirit that, you know, they're having to try multiple rounds of assisted reproduction. Um, mm -hmm. there are people that have like come from, come from hetero relationships where they have, have already had kids. And now they're walking through like, what does this assisted reproductive journey look like? And why am I struggling a little bit more in this space when I've already essentially done it twice. So why, why is it so hard this time when I'm actually trying to be intentional about bringing my family to be? Why is it a little bit hard for me to come around? Is it like, what can I be doing better for, for my body that it's not happening, you know, this time mm -hmm. around? So we get a lot of those stories. Um, we get a lot of just wanting to work with other um, queer, queer doulas who understand like what it is to be a queer person who may be experiencing some sort of gender dysphoria or who may be experiencing um explain that term you know to the community or the people out there listening what gender dysphoria is gender dysphoria is basically the experience where you may you are a trans person or a non-binary person that and you can be trans and non-binary I'm, I'm gonna throw around the terms and, and give a whole bunch of definitions but when you're the the body that you are currently living in does not match who you know yourself to be 
Um, and that can be really frustrating. It can be really depressing. It can be fill you with rage, sadness, all of those feelings because it's, it's not matching. And so you can look down and experience, like you, you're like, I know that I'm a man, but I have boobs and this is what other people ex associate with being a female, but I know myself not to be that. And it can be infuriating, it can be sad, it can be depressed. So they go through things where they're like trying, they they will bind their breasts until they, because maybe you can't afford surgery. And I always tell people, they're like, oh, if, if you're if you're trans, like you're not really trans until you go through surgery. I'm like, there are trans people who will never get surgery. Will never happen. Mm -hmm. It's a financial obstacle, it's a financial obstacle, mm -hmm. it's a physical obstacle that it's dangerous just like giving birth. And it may not be in their, in their path that they're able to get that sort of sur surgery done, but that does not make them any less man or woman or non-binary person. Um, so that's what gender dysphoria is when, when, when the, t the two pieces, which are in and what you know yourself to be, are not, are not matching. Mm -hmm. You see something that, I mean, crap, you said a whole bunch. <laughs> and I can't even remember. I was like, oh, that's a um, it'll come back. There's my mom brain kicking in, kicking in. Yeah. Um, um, talk about like the financial hurdles. And that's something that I don't think a lot of people realize, just like the financial journey. And also when it's coupled with, this is what you said, with the ability to, Lot, when there's fertility concerns or, or, you know, and you have a different way of conceiving now. Yeah, so the, the financial piece is the biggest piece. The When you run into queer couples, the first thing that they're probably going to ask you when they're talking about their family journey is how much did that cost? How much did it cost for your sperm donor vials or your egg? How, did, how much did it cost for your egg retrievals? How much did it cost for your second parent adoption? How much did it cost for your um for your donor contract like how much does it cost because it gets expensive mm -hmm. and so that's why a lot of people try to cut costs by inseminating at home and a lot of people don't even know you can find a midwife which is also going to be a cost but a midwife who will help you do home insemination if you don't want to go into you know a, a some sort of clinic or facility where the or fertility clinic or facility where they will handle that for you if you did still want to have the at-home process so there are like a bunch of pieces that end up costing a whole lot of money for our families to come to be and even be made possible um so like i said starting with one normally whatever donation that you need is going to cost you some money whether it be an egg donation or a sperm donation or you need someone to carry for you through surrogacy that all has a cost attached to it um mm -hmm. after that once you you've fully gone through all of those processes and you're able to actually become pregnant in some if you are do intend to birth after that normally what happens you'll need some sort of donor contract um to make sure that your family has all rights to your baby and you you too or maybe you solo alone as a person has exclusive um, parenting rights to your child after that baby comes to be, everybody's all excited. And outside of, um, if you are in a, if you are a coupled person, then you will have to do second parent adoption in most states, even if you are on the birth certificate. Um, there are some states where the birth certificate is enough, but if you ever plan to move states or move countries or anything like that, you'll normally have to do second parent adoption, which also comes with a heavy price tag. So get a good lawyer that you know is going to give you a good price and is looking out for your family because these things add up. And this is the outside of, of course, whatever if you, you know, don't have um, whatever your insurance is going to cover for your doula fertility costs, things like that. These are things that are on that. Mm, additional cost. Yeah. <laughs> additional cost. And then one that also adds to the layer of or a, to a, a, a sense of like depression and anxiety mm -hmm. when you are dealing with with conception. Yep. And maybe we're not conceiving and, or we didn't conceive this month. And then normally, so what I also, what I advise people that are in my group that are transgender, that are, that are pre hormones is what I say is that if you are going to try before you start hormone hormones, if you do want to have a family at some point, um, if you want, even if you don't intend to birth, maybe you want your partner to carry if that's, if they are able to do that, or you want some sort of other biological ties to your child. What you're going to have to do is normally freeze your eggs or sperm, and that has a price tag attached to it as well. And it's best that you start doing that before you do your hormone treatments because it can affect a whole lot of things once you start um, using mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. estrogen or testosterone. 
Yeah, so it's a hard, you got you got you got to think about it ahead of time and get the pockets ready ahead of time. But there are a lot of resources like my even my group we normally help to try and bridge the the financial gap for families that are either experiencing they're having like maybe they're having to go through more rounds of IUI or IVF than they ever plan to. Maybe they're trying to cover second parent adoption fees are costing a lot more. We do try to help them bridge the gap where we can. That's so good. That's so good. And if you guys already are not following her, please make sure you guys do. You guys follow her. Um, I just think the page is beautiful. I know some moms personally on there. Um, so uh, I just and I just think it's just important to highlight all black and brown families. I just do. I just think I, I just think that we just all face the same obstacle point period blank when it comes to when we have to bird, we need to be able to transition help, you know, from a, a to into a safe space. That's it. That's I don't care. I just don't care what what body this baby is coming from. You know what I'm saying? I just think it's it, it, there's no judgment there. Yeah. And I just think if we just come from a place of like you said of, uh, of humanity, seeing that this is a human experience and respecting that, and we're, and just coming at it from that perspective, removing all else, then that's it. It's the same walk. Exactly. It's the same walk, um, and it's the same fight with an additional layer of complexity to me when it comes to the level of possible discrimination that they could face in the hospital setting. So not only like being black and brown, but then also dealing with the level of you know discrimination and not being heard or or the racism or that's embedded within that structure. Exactly. So it's just it becomes harder. Exactly. I always say you have to like you have to worry about one. Um, I'm a black person. They already think that we are inferior to pain. We are inferior. To, you know, don't we don't experience those mm -hmm. things on the same level as everybody else? And now on top of that, as a queer person, I have well, to see, then, then there's me. My, my humanity. Then there's me who is very very fortunate to be able to sit amongst and have the conversations with the others and be like, my conversation ain't gonna change. Mm -hmm. And I tell, I say that like. They think that, but then there's me. And I'm, you know, I'm fortunate that the MBDA has a platform that it does. Because what I do then is I take, I compile all of this. And then when I'm sitting against somebody who doesn't look or love like me, then I'm like, okay, okay. White person who has the dollars, yeah. you have the, the ability to implement change. So until we stop dying, your tears don't mean anything. But this is where you can make a difference. So either you're going to be a, a proper ally, do your own research, don't look to us to be the educator anymore, and get on the, sh like, you're going to sh shit or get off the pot, because otherwise get the fuck out of my way. Yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of how I move. So, but I compile everything. I take all of the information and I go back to the drawing board and I'm like, okay, what can we first of all do at the MBDA to strengthen our curriculum, to strengthen our, you know, code of ethics? What can we do as far as, you know, making sure that respect is across the board? And then how can we then trickle that throughout the community, through our educational platform, through our mentorships, you know, thus and so forth. And then when we begin to have conversations with insurance companies or when we have conversations with, you know, Fortune 500 companies or 501, major 501c3s, then I, we're having, I'm having those conversations like, look, y'all want to implement change? This is where and how you need to do it. Exactly. Exactly. And, and those conversations, you know, they're so important, like you said, with with insurance companies, like there was what who's in I forget which insurance company, one of the big ones. Insurance company, it turns mm -hmm. out that they were charging queer people for fertility treatments way more than they were charging, mm -hmm. you know, other non queer people or hetero people for for the the same treatments. And mm -hmm. I'm, our families have to come to be. Why is there a tax on that? <laughs> Why is there a tax on that? Because now, like, and that's like black or white. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, that was black or white, just charging queer people above and beyond for the for the same fertility treatments that we have. That our families can't come to be. Well, they can't. That, that's <laughs> a socioeconomic level of discrimination. So mm -hmm. that's another form of discrimination, you know, of course. But to have it so blatant, not that if things aren't blatant, but. <sighs> so and I want to talk about. Go ahead. I was the, you been the person that I that has walked into the clinic and they're like, "Where's your Where's your husband?" And I'm like, "It's not a thing. He's not coming." But I thought about it from two angles. I'm like, one, 
you assume that I had that, like, I was, was I going to get a different level of care if I was an unmarried person or an unmarried black girl? Or what, if, mm -hmm. what does that look like on me? And two, you mm -hmm. assume that I was a hetero person. So these are all assumptions. I'm just like, ask the question. Mm -hmm. And me. it's like, you have to go through that level of assessment so fast. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, um, versus them saying, where's your partner? Yep. Is there a partner? Is there a partner? Is there a partner? Or not. I'm like, actually, I was just waiting on my mom. She finna come through the door <laughs> any second. Something so simple could be, and and imagine like that level of like anxiety and a barrier that's all you're already coming on ready. You you just you know you want you already I'm because all, you you through you don't know which which gun you got to fire back with. Already defensive. I don't know now. I'm like, okay, what type of person am I running into? Like mm -hmm. what? Like now I got to have these defenses up where I need to be in the most relaxed, feeling safe space possible. And you can tell it's something that sticks with me because the last time I had a baby was five almost five years ago still mm -hmm. still experiencing mm -hmm. the same thing and of course i hear it all the time and in our community the reason why they want to be i mean outside of just wanting a home experience the reason why people or especially black queer people want to birth at home so much want to conceive at home so much is because this is where we feel safest we don't have mm -hmm. to run into defending our humanity elsewhere so if those pro if providers can make the difference and make us feel included we will absolutely use the services and use the additional help and use extra hands and make you a part of our village but we can't do that if we're constantly having to defend ourselves and make ourselves human and make ourselves feel normal in a space that is should be normal for us in general such a fight such a fight so I have another question. What about the level of discrimination experience amongst like us? Mm -hmm. Like how do you, you know, how does that get supported? How does it get supported amongst the level of discrimination mm -hmm. in our community? Yeah, in, in, in the community. And it could be from like, um, so let me I'm trying to 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 frame the questions in the space to where it's neutral across the board. So I may not be speaking in clear sentences. Okay. But how black folks discriminate against each other. You yeah. know, and they can be heterosexual or in the same peer group or um even you know queer themselves but don't find that family structure acceptable if you know what I mean because I'm gonna put it like this so like I'm from Oakland so I'm from Oakland so you see a lot of um a lot of like femme stud mm -hmm. but then if you go to LA there's a lot of femme femme mm -hmm. you know what I mean so like so how like navigating that level of like mm. it's always n navigating something um mm -hmm. so what I will say is being a queer person and a black person, I feel like when I'm, the argument is normally in the black community is that I'm proving that my family is valid. And they're like, mm -hmm. you're, you're defying God and science and pushing the boundaries. And I'm like, I just want to be, have a family like everyone else. I'm like, why is it not pushing the boundaries of God and science? If I was just a hetero person who couldn't have a baby and I use these same the same treatments you wouldn't treat me the same way but because i'm a queer person who's using them okay now i'm pushing the boundaries of god and science mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and why is that fair when i'm using the same mm -hmm. as every as same as everybody else that that mm -hmm. needed assistance along their journey i just needed assistance for a different reason um mm -hmm. so that's normally the argument there like basically that we're doing too much um by by i don't know trying to have a family like everybody else um mm -hmm. when you start having to especially it gets com um, complicated when you start looking for donors. There are probably what feels like all of three black sperm donors. <laughs> so if you are a black person with sperm, you should absolutely donate. There are queer families who would love, um, who would love to um, use your help in forming their families because I, like I said, it's a thing in our community where it's like the reason why we don't have a lot of black donors or black sperm donors is because it's one, not marketed to us when mm -hmm. when um donor clinics and things are looking for donors it's not marketed to in black communities to black people so that's one thing mm -hmm. and two we already have this thing about just doctors and medical care in general we're apprehensive when it comes to involving other people in our business or whatever that looks like so that gives us a shortage as well um so we're we're combating that and it just becomes this whole large thing where it's like 
I just want to have a family <laughs> and that's okay for me to do it. That human experience uh, right back at the front of it all. Yeah. You're not, mm -hmm. you're not asking or doing the wrong thing. And that's all, like I said, that's always the conversation in the black community. Like, Oh, why, why can't y'all just no? Mm -hmm. I want a biological child. I can do that too. Or mm -hmm. if, if that's what you want, because I have families in my space that are super open to fostering, that are super open to adopting, mm -hmm. that are, I have a blended family that are blending families with people who already have kids. So it's, there's a bunch of ways, invalid ways that fa our families come to be. But when it comes to wanting to use assisted reproduction, which, and when you want to be a birthing person or you have a partner that is a birthing person, um, we don't want to hear that we're pushing boundaries of God and science. We want to hear that it's mm -hmm. natural for us too. Like our births are natural. Our conception journeys are natural, whatever natural looks like for you. Mm. that's like the same word normal like what is normal yep what is normal our and is i feel like it's always the the, the word mm -hmm. natural in our life i, I want to have a natural conception natural birth or i'm doing it the traditional way or whatever that looks i'm like girl sis mm -hmm. if you're okay with ginger terms girl sis <laughs> like <laughs> it's okay <laughs> Well, I I thank you for I, I'm I'm glad we were consistent with connecting like because yeah. we you got like I keep like I said at the top of this video we were like we have got and I'm so glad you circle back around to me because mm -hmm. it, you were like do you still want to go live and I was like yes I I you know and we were definitely like if there was anybody that I was meant to go or we were meant to go live a long time ago, it was, it was definitely Mia and I, and I think it's a continued conversation. And I also think that uh, we should go live on our personal pages too, <laughs> to talk about some other shit. <laughs> like, you know, I have to be, I have to be one way on this page and then I can be it another way. <laughs> so if, you're, if you're looking for my personal page is the big mama Mia. I say some wild stuff over there so we can have those conversations yeah. that y'all really want to have on yeah. the page. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that'll that'll be good. Uh, if we can have go live on our personal pages, like like in between maybe Thanksgiving and Christmas, and just have a like a real candid conversation about some fuck yeah. shit, you know. And I, I would really enjoy that because I just think, like you said, it's just about community. Mm -hmm. Point period and blank. Well, I love you, Mia. I haven't met you, and I'm so grateful that you are doing what you're doing just to support people because we just folks need it. Thank you. And mm -hmm. I will say, um, if you are a doula and you are supportive of the LGBTQ community and you're looking, maybe you don't know how to get yourself out there. I have a whole community of folks that are looking for your help. Um, I haven't even announced this on this page yet, but I'll say it on this live because we all friends over here. We are going to be having a conference next year. And one of the mm -hmm. things that I want to host is going to be maybe like a doula coffee chat where I'm going to let people, some doulas that are affirming and queer doulas come in and chat with some of the folks that are going to be attending the conference um, and just let them know that you're here. Let them know the services that you provide, whether it be try, you know, fertility care, postpartum care, whatever that looks like. Um, mm -hmm. I want you out there and I want them to connect with you. So let me know. And I want, I'm going to put our website here on people. Yeah. And I should have did that to begin with. <laughs> I don't know. Am I doing it right? Hold on. Because Instagram be like tripping sometime. It won't let me. Cancel. Maybe I should have did it. Anyway, I'll just say blackdoulas.org, y'all. Um, or you, somebody can write it in the chat. Yeah. Um, blackdoulas.org. You guys can register, you know, in our directory if you are a black doula who wants to be found. And um, I just think it's just so important absolutely so, thank you and we'll see you in somewhere well on our personal pages between right <laughs> between that and christmas all right thank you. when you have a wonderful day <laughs> bye, bye.